All right, this video is designed to show my photo managers how to process photos for digital media class using Adobe Lightroom and then sharing those out to our Google Drive folder. And so let's get started with that. So Adobe Lightroom, I'll just back up a little bit here, is on the desktop on the two computers in the digital media classroom that are by the printer. And this is the icon to use it. And I've already opened it ahead of time to save us a little bit of time here. Um, when you have a pink slip hanging on the door, when you come into class, there will be a memory card attached and you will need to process that student's photos. And one thing to think about is processing the photos of students in your hour because then they can work on their assignments more efficiently and quickly than if you go on to someone else's that is in a different hour. So try to be mindful of that. Um, the step one to this is to take the entire pink slip with you to the station with the memory card. Please only take one at a time and never, um, once you put the memory card into Lightroom, um, do not take it out of the card reader until you finalized your photos. Um, even if you didn't finish them by the end of the class hour, you would leave that there for the next photo manager to continue on, or you'd be coming back to finalize it because it will screw up your edits because it will no longer see what you've told it to see. So I have a memory card reader and I have my SD card in there. And my first step is going to be to go to file, import photos and video. And it's always going to look to see um, where the pictures are. And usually it will find them. Sometimes if you don't have a blue light on your card reader indicating that it's working, it might be looking for pictures elsewhere or not see them. Um, I can see that Emma shot volleyball and I'm seeing volleyball pictures. So that's making me feel like I've got the right set of photos here. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit import. And I'm going to make this bigger. And so I'm just going to get that out of the way there. So you can see this bar right here. It's still working on importing photos. And so if you have like hundreds, it might take a little while, um, but you can start with the ones that are showing initially. And um, one of the things you'll learn quickly is that because we're um, a, new, a class where students are learning new skills that you're gonna see a lot of errors and a lot of mistakes and a lot of pictures that aren't very good. And your job is to find the diamonds in the rough, find the photos that are good. And we will talk about what you can delete and what you cannot delete. So we're going to just do a quick little perusal here. When I double click on a photo, I can see it larger in the center, which is what I want to do. And rather than deleting bad photos, it's really a good idea to flag the good photos because there are far fewer to flag than there are to delete. There will be more bad than good always, pretty much. So if I use the arrow keys uh, on my keyboard, I am going to do that now. I can kind of toggle through here. And this photo, if we had the front of her face, this actually would be a pretty cool picture. But um, because we can't see who this is, even though the student might be able to tell us who it is, there's... Um, it's just not quite good enough to keep. Um, it's close. Um, all right, so here we've got somebody. And one thing about pictures like this, actually, I'm gonna keep it just because it is really hard to get the ball in the shot. And so this student did a good job with that. And I wanna at least let them know that I think that was really good. So here I've got a student, her face is showing and a ball is in the shot. I'm going to keep it by flagging it. So you notice I'm flagging. This right here is reject. Now you could use that, but it doesn't really make any sense. And I'll show you why in a little bit. After we get the ones we want selected, we can just filter out and keep just the ones we want. So it's a little more quick. So the step one to photo processing is keeping the good ones, getting rid of the bad ones. So that's what I'm doing right now. There's 131 photos here. And for the sake of time, I don't know if I'm going to go through all of them or not. 
Here's a great example of a picture where we have a girl, she's getting ready to serve, there's no ball, there's way too much dead space, and so there's really nothing happening here, so I move on. Um, this one would be great. The problem is it's blurry, so we can't keep that one. Um, moving on, moving on, moving on. Hey, look at that. We have a girl. She's in focus. There's a ball. It's a pretty tight shot. We'll take it. Eyes are closed. We move on. Blurry. Ball's out of range. All right. I'm keep with this girl for a little bit, it looks like. One of the things you'll notice about volleyball pictures is the servers tend to be your best shots because they're a little more still. Volleyball is extremely hard to shoot. The ball goes up so high. It moves very quickly. The play goes back and forth. You have to really know and understand volleyball in order to get really good pictures. So don't be too hard on the kids that are taking these photos. And this, by the way, is with our biggest lens. So this is our best chance of actually getting some decent pictures. Like that one right there is so close to being good enough, but we'll flag it. But I can tell you right now it won't go in because that ball's a little bit blurry and the eyes are shut. I'm pretty darn sure. But we will keep this one. And so you can see I move through them pretty quickly. So you don't need to spend a lot of time um, analyzing them if there's not anything going on in them. Okay, so too blurry, no face. And we're just hoping for one really great picture, you know. Um, this would be kind of cool repetition if we had a little bit more of the faces and if we had a ball especially. Hey, here's a fun one. We've got a girl, we've got a line, we've got a ball. So close to being cool. I don't know if we could use this one or not. We're going to go ahead and flag it just in case. All right. Uh, probably too blurry. Too blurry. Now, these are really helpful photos to keep. Okay, because there's a story here. These guys are talking with their coach. I know we can't see all their faces, but here's the thing. It's re repetition. We can see the coach. We know what's going on. There's a story here. So we are definitely keeping photos like that. Hey, look at that. All right. There is an action shot with a face, some emotion, and a ball. That's exciting. We'll keep that. And this is kind of cool. Um... I don't know that we could really use it in the yearbook, but it might be cool on the link. So let's keep it. And moving on. Hey, there's a ball, two girls. One's got a face. I'm going to take it for right now. We can get pretty desperate for pictures in volleyball. So we have to be a little bit generous with what we keep. I can tell you right now that if these are the best pictures we have with the giant lens, the next ones we'll see on a different card where they didn't have the giant lens will probably be even worse. Well, ready positions, three of them in a row. I like that. Let's keep it. Come on, ball. All right, look at that. Now, see, these can get cropped later on so that we can get rid of the dead space. So they're definitely worth keeping when we have something like that. We never keep pictures where someone looks bad um, or like where a kid could be made fun of or just anything like that. We just, that would never happen. We do not do that. Hey, look at that. That's a cool one. Keep it rolling here. And so we just try to move through fairly quickly. Ooh, that's fun. Geez, she looks like she's like levitating that thing. That's Nanea. Look at that. Nanea, you're going to be watching this video. Um, it looks like I may end up having to stop this as a part one and do a part two. So yeah, I have about 20 seconds left, but you get the idea here. So I'm going to do the part two will be what to do after you've selected the pictures that you want. And we'll have a part one and a part two to this video because of this screencasting that 